So I'm actually, my name is Bradley Wojtek. I'm a postdoc in neuroscience at UCSF and also the computational scientist slash data pornographer at uh, Uber Incorporated, which is a nonprofit, uh, not, sorry, a for-profit startup in San Francisco. Uh, and by day, I'm a neuroscientist and I study how different brain areas communicate. Um, and I am also a zombie expert. This is not necessarily related, but, uh, <coughs> and uh, the, the first thing I started to do in when I, bringing these two different fields together is uh, I'm very interested in data and what the role that data plays in neuroscience. And uh, my first job, I was basically a mechanical Turk. I went through files manually and uh, pulled out data for Excel. Um, I study uh, using EEG is uh, the main tool that I use in my neuroimaging research. Uh, and EEG contains a lot of data. So here you can see I have 64 channels of electrodes on my head recording data every millisecond. Uh, and that's just mountains and mountains of data. Uh, we also do this intracranially in people undergoing brain surgery. Um, and it's, again, just mountains and mountains of data. And trying to figure out how these different brain areas communicate is computationally very exhaustive. Uh, and this is a really difficult problem. And uh, really, one of the limitations of my research is just uh, computational power. Uh, I can easily run uh, an analysis that, that takes uh, days and days to actually churn through the data. That may be an issue because I'm not a very good programmer. Or it may just be because the data is very large. I don't really know yet. Um, and when I first started working with the startup, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this scene from Ghostbusters, but this is basically how it felt. I'm an academic, but I was moving into the startup community, and uh, they expect results. Uh, so the startup community moves much, much faster than academia. And that's been a very good exercise. And, and, uh, but it's only a sabbatical. That's only, <laughs> there's a reason I'm only doing it for a few months. Um, and one of the things that I do for Uber, which is the company that I work for, is uh, I do basic uh, data analysis. And so this is an on-demand car service company, uh, and my job is to try and minimize pickup times based upon geospatial data. Uh, and so uh, one way that we can do this is by looking at past trips that have occurred in San Francisco, for example, um, and uh, figure out where people were going to, where they're coming from, and where our cars were located at the time that uh, the, the person requested a ride. And of course, that varies over time. Uh, and one of the first things I had to do was create a tool in order to make this happen. And uh, that, was, that was very difficult. Uh, again, this is one of these uh, uh, results that they expected very quickly. And so this is an example of a heat map of all of the pickup locations in San Francisco. Uh, this is another example that I created. Uh, and this is where the cars were at the time that they accepted uh, the person's ride. And so you can really clearly see features of San Francisco. You can see all the streets and the highways and, and things like that. Uh, and so when we compare these kinds of data, versus some of the other data, we get a really good idea of how to minimize pickup times. And we actually submitted some of our data to uh, an open data, uh, Data Insight SF, which is an open data competition. And this is a visualization that the team created based upon all of our trips. So you can see the flow in San Francisco of where everybody's going to. And part of the stuff I want to do is see what more we can do with these data. And so this is actually a heat map showing uh, average miles per hour in San Francisco. Uh, so the brighter it is, the faster it is. And you can actually see downtown, it's very red, which means relatively slow. Uh, and you can see sort of on the west side, it gets a little bit faster. And so uh, using these techniques I learned in, my start in the startup world, uh, I went from learning about car networks and networks of, of traffic flow to applying that to do some analysis on brain networks. So this is an example of uh, the connections between brain regions uh, that I pulled from the peer review literature. And we can examine how these data change over time. So here you can see in 1905, this is what we relatively knew about the brain, 1930, 1955, 1980. You can see the evolution of our understanding about how brain regions are associated based upon the peer-reviewed literature. And uh, given some of the techniques I learned in the startup, I then said, okay, well, what more can we do with these data? And so here, this is a technique I call semi-automated hypothesis generation. And 15 seconds is not enough to look at all of this, but basically I'm trying to replace grad students. Um, and I'm integrating some of these data as well with uh, current existing open data sets, such as the Allen Brain Atlas, which is uh, a database that contains gene expression profile uh, for different genes in the brain. And we can interface with that and say, how does actual gene expression compare to what we think uh, in terms of what genes are doing what functions in the brain? Uh, and now I'm working with a company, another, another startup in San Francisco called Luminosity. Uh, and we have data on more than 1 million subjects on a very simple attention task. Uh, and here you can see the uh, results from these greater than 1 million subjects, uh, where the uh, y-axis here is relative behavioral performance, and the x-axis is age. And you can see we peak at about 21 years old, which is the um, legal drinking age. Uh, and we slowly decline until age 80. Uh, and so now I'm trying to interface with other very large open databases. Uh, for example, the uh, NOAA has data on weather 
and climate uh, for different locations. And I can say, okay, when the person took this attention test online, I know their IP address, and uh, it doesn't matter because I'm done. 